for the third match in succession, the Reds found themselves playing a top six side as they travelled away to Norton United. The hosts had lost just once in the league all season and were also on a good run in the FA Vars, so it was always likely to be a tough game. There was an early half chance for James Buckley when Ronnie Morgan's cross came through to the midfielder at the back post, but keeper Danny Roberts was quickly off his line to snuff out the threat. AFC Liverpool's own worst enemy this season appears to be themselves and there was an early sign of the self-destructive streak when River Humphrey's back header was a little short. Lee Talbot got to the ball ahead of Stephen Longrig but couldn't get enough purchase on it and Jack Sinnott was there to tidy things up. It seemed as though that wasn't enough for the Reds as a short while later Humphrey somehow contrived to give the ball away to Jonathan Bowman when under no pressure. And though Stephen Longrig did well to smother the ball at the midfielder's feet, Lee Cropper was there to follow up and smash the ball home. That was Cropper's 10th goal of the season and his 4th of the week after he had claimed a hat-trick against Congleton Town 4 days earlier. Things were to get worse just two minutes later as the Reds found themselves two goals down when Darren Chadwick rose to flick on Thomas Winkle's long throw in. Coincidentally, it was Chadwick's fourth goal in the last eight days after his hat trick against Baldmere St Michael's a week earlier had helped Norton United progress in the FA Vars. Despite finding themselves two goals behind, the Reds continued to have the better of the game, but they just couldn't create any real chances. Both Ronnie Morgan and then Paul Brown had shots from distance, but neither trouble keeper Danny Roberts. AFC Liverpool should have been awarded the chance to get back into the match shortly before half-time, when Darren Chadwick shoved Michael Gervin in the back inside the box, but neither the referee nor the linesman, who was merely yards away from the incident, thought that there had been a foul. AFC Liverpool started the second half brightly and Danny Roberts was forced into some early action, tipping over Paul Brown's free kick. Substitute John Lawless should have pulled a goal back for AFC Liverpool when River Humphrey sent in the perfect centre to pick out the striker on mark six yards out, but Lawless got his header all wrong and the ball looped over the bar. Then Steve Corris met a John Lawless corner at the back stick, forcing Danny Roberts to palm the ball behind. From that second successive corner, AFC Liverpool kept up the pressure as John Lawless sent in a cross that found Paul Brown all alone at the back, but the striker was unable to do anything more than send his half volley into the midriff of Roberts. Having continually pushed the home side further and further back, AFC Liverpool made the breakthrough on 74 minutes when Ronnie Morgan forced the ball through to James Buckley and the midfielder claimed his second of the season via a deflection off Darren Chadwick. It was nothing less than AFC Liverpool deserved and there was the feeling in the air that they could go on to claim at least one point from the match, if not all three. However, the self-destructive streak of AFC Liverpool surfaced once again as Jay Wynn's sloppy pass along the back line allowed Niall Green to steal in and effectively seal the result for the home side. It was the second costly defensive mistake of the day and it left Reds manager Paul Moore dumbfounded after the match as he was unable to fathom how his side, who had dominated the 90 minutes, had ended up losing. There might have been an immediate reply from AFC Liverpool had Steve Corris managed to lift the ball over Danny Roberts, but the keeper was alert once again to the danger. Right to the end, it was AFC Liverpool who were on the front foot, but they just couldn't force another breakthrough, and James Buckley's wayward effort from the edge of the box was the last meaningful action of a disappointing day.
how well you play, you can't count on the first couple of mistakes like that, can you? We've dominated the game, Paul. Uh, but like you just said there, if you're going to do the things that we've done today, it's criminal, mate. And we've absolutely dominated the game. You know, if, if we could turn around and say they had the passage of play in 95 minutes or whatever it is, I'd say, well, I talk about it, but they haven't had a passage of play to open us up and think, it, it's our own downfall, mate. We, we, we've created our own problems. Uh, you know, my keeper hasn't even had a shot to save yet. He's conceded the three goals, and three very bad goals at that, by people doing or thinking that they can play in the, uh, the Serie A or the Premier League. Sometimes you've got to learn to defend, mate. It's as simple as that. You can't be playing football on your penalty spot or knocking balls back from, I don't know where, what? From throwing lines and, and people are not looking and then all of a sudden you pass a ball and then you show someone's name. We know the way we want to play, but it, it was just today, I'm just I'm dumbfounded with the, the goals we conceded, mate. It's a positive improvement in the performance, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a big positive, to be fair, Paul, because like I've just said, I thought we've dominated the game. But, you know, when you look on the paper tomorrow or you look on the website, we've just been beat by, uh, by a very average side in my eyes, and that's not me being bitter. But, you know, that's the way they play. Let them go and play it like that. But, you know, in black and white tomorrow, mate, uh, we've lost 3-1. And I can scratch my head and go, how how's that happened? But I know how it's happened. Defensive mistakes, again, uh, you know, there was, there was four mad goals last year. Uh, last week, sorry. Uh, so that's eight goals we've conceded, you know. Just can't can't be uh, be doing with it to be honest. Pushing him back, pushing him back, you get the goal back and it all look, looks rosy, doesn't it then? Well, as soon as we scored, I said to the lads at half time, if you score, we will win the game. And when we scored, I felt we we're gonna win the game. And then lo and behold, like I just said, you know, one of my defenders has decided to uh, to knock a ball across the eighteen yard line with no one looking but they're centre forward and I don't know for the life of me why he's done it but he's done it and they've, they've got a score from it and then it puts us back on the, the back foot then and then you know it looks like the, the, the score line looks worse than what it was but it should have been I don't know could have been a lot more for us but if you don't want to take your chances when they do come you'll struggle uh, and if you defend the way we did you'll certainly struggle How do you deal with the players when they've uh, made a mistake like that? You'd have to pick them up Paul I mean I've just said you know when I played football, mate, I made mistakes. But again, I was probably different than most. I was a goalkeeper when I played, and I, yeah, I made, I made many mistakes. But I always dust myself down, mate. I, you'd never ever see me head by my ankles. You know, I, you have to get on with it. Uh, but when people make mistakes at our level, unfortunately, you see them. It takes you a week to get them back up. It's happened. Deal with it. Listen, it's another day. It's, you know, there's another game Tuesday or the Wednesday, and we just go again. But if you, if, if you can't get your head up for games of football, mate. Uh, then there is something wrong with you as manager. I'll just, uh, you know, I've had quite weird with the uh, the lads. You know, you know how I feel. I've just gone in ranting and raving. It's it's happened. It happens, in, especially at our level of football. Because if the players at our level of football don't make mistakes like they do, make they be a lot higher. And pay, maybe that's why they're not a lot higher because they do make their mistakes. But you know, we've come here and I've thought we've dominated the game to be honest. But you know, they've got the three goals. Good. Uh, you've got a game Wednesday, so chance to get it out of the system quickly well I'd like to think so Paul I thought like you know today I thought we'd done okay you know it was a lot a lot better than last week uh, but the results the same mate you know we've got no points on the board from two games uh, my goal difference is not looking the best as it was uh, so something's got to happen mate uh, they'll have to start switching on mate unfortunately because if they don't you know I've said it before you know I've worked hard for three years and I'm not look, just going to let it dwindle, mate. I, I'll go and I'll, I will replace them. And that's not a threat to the lads. And I've, you know, I say it all the time. I look for players all the time. I'm never in. But I'm not going to see and, and sit and let things happen like that week in, week out. Because last week it happened. And it's happened again this week. And yet we've dominated today's game. Last week everyone was off the metal. But today, you know, a lot of the lads were, were on it. But I'm, I'm not going to be sitting there while when it's happened. We have to dust ourselves down deal with it it's a bad time but I've had bad times at this club for many many years mate uh, and we'll go again you know Norton's just coming they're all singing and dancing and I thought they won the, uh, the league mate so I'll take that as a little positive with that you know it's, it, it's a great club to beat if you like uh, but you know let them enjoy the day mate oh, good luck when yeah because uh, I'll be looking down at them this year mate believe me
Better look for Wednesday then. Cheers, Paul. Thank you, mate.